सो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम यू बैक टू माई नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इन ऑब्स्टेट्रिक्स एंड इन दिस लेक्चर विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द प्लेसेंट्रल फॉर्मेशन ग्रोथ एंड फंक्शंस इन द डोमेस्टिक एनिमल्स एंड प्रोफेसर गोविंद नारायण पुरोहित द हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ वेटनरी गायनेकोलॉजी एंड ऑब्स्टेट्रिक्स कॉलेज ऑफ वेटनरी एंड एनिमल साइंसेज राजस्थान यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ वेटनरी एंड एनिमल साइंसेज बीकानेर राजस्थान इंडिया the the word placenta it has derived from a latin origin uh because it is similar to a flat cake so uh the word uh, flat cake means placenta and so the word placenta was derived placenta is a flattened circular organ in the uterus of pregnant eutherian mammals nourishing and maintaining the fetus throughout through the umbilical cord and the umbilical cord or the navel omphalos is a flexible cord like structure containing blood vessels and attaching a human or other mammalian fetus to the placenta during gestation now the types of placenta has been classified in a number of ways the uh, there have been three classifications based on the degree of tissue loss at parturition based on the shape or distribution of the chorionic villi and based on the tissue apposition based on the degree of tissue loss at parturition placenta has been classified as deciduate uh, which is uh, seen in the human uh, beings and the rodents and then it is non deciduate uh, seen in most farm animals and then partially deciduate seen in dogs and cats based on the shape or distribution of the chorionic villi the placenta has been uh, classified as cartilaginary cattle sheep diffuse in pigs and horses zonary in dog and cat and discoid in the human beings so this is a diffuse placenta the chorionic villi is, is distributed throughout the uterine horn and this is cartilaginary there are special zones of attachment the cartilaginous this is a discoid in human beings and this is the zonary type of placenta the ruminant placenta instead of having a large area of contact between maternal and fetal vascular systems have numerous smaller placentae the terminology used to describe ruminant placentation is cartilaginary the cartilagin is the fetal side of the placenta and the carenchyle is the maternal side of the placenta the placentome a cartilagin and a carenchyle together here you can see the corioelentois and this is the amnion with the fetus these are the cartilagins and this is the umbilical vessels or the umbilical cord This is a cartilaginary type of placenta in cattle. The uh, cartilagin is convex. This is the endometrium. This is the carenchyle, and in the sheep, this is concave. The placental attachment in the ruminant is considered to be syn-epithelio-corial. This is the corion, the uterine epithelium, capillaries, stroma. and these are the binucleate cells which migrate and fuse with the uterine epithelium forming a syncytium so uh, the ruminant placenta is also considered synepitheliocorial the binuclear giant cells form 20% of the fetal placenta they invade the endometrium and because of the they are the source of placental lactogens and pregnancy specific protein b the placental lactogens are protein hormones they have lactin like activity they stimulate the milk synthesis they are not present in the pig and the mare they regulate the maternal metabol metabolism to facilitate fetal growth they are in high levels in the last one third of gestation high levels facilitate higher milk production dairy cows have higher blood concentration than the beef cows The bovine placental lactogen hormone is detected in maternal serum at about four months of gestation, 
and remains low throughout through parturition. In contrast, the ovine placental lactrogen is secreted in whooping quantities beginning at about day 50 and remains high through gestation. Placental lactogen also accumulates to high concentrations in the serum of fetal sheep. This chart is showing the placental lactogen levels in cattle and then Eve, in goat, in women and in rat. They have the somatotropic activity in the goat and the Eve and uh, basically the lactogenic activity. Then they secrete the pregnancy specific protein B unique to ruminants. The functions are uncertain but has been used to detect pregnancy in cattle, sheep, deer and can be used to detect pregnancy in cows after day 25. This is the zonary placenta seen in uh, the dogs. This is the fetus, this is the amnion and this is the zonary placenta. The canine placenta looks like, looks very similar to that of cats. A feature usually seen in placenta of both species is the marginal hematomas, hematophagus jones. These are bands of maternal hemorrhage at the margins of the zonary placenta. The products of hemoglobin breakdown give them a distinctly green coloration due to uteroverding in dogs, whereas in cats they are brownish and usually less obvious. The canine placenta is said to produce little if any quantity of steroid hormones. As with other species, maintenance of pregnancy is dependent on continued secretion of progesterone during gestation. But corpora lutea appear to be the exclusive source of progesterone in the bitch. Luteal secretion of progesterone is in turn dependent on secretion of luteinizing hormone and probably prolactin from the anterior pituitary. Removal of a seal at any time during canine gestation leads to termination of the pregnancy. Also, progesterone profiles in pregnant and pseudo-pregnant bitch, bitches are indistinguishable until late gestation or diastress. This is a discoid placenta. You can just see here, uh, this is the umbilicus and this is the discoid placenta attached to the uterus. You see, uh, you can see over here. This is the diffuse placenta, this is the microcotyledonary and these are the microcotyledons formed in the maternal endometrium. This is in the horse and this is in the pig. The microcotyledons, they invade the uterine endometrium and they increase the placental surface area. Then a unique feature in the Equine species is the formation of the endometrial cups. And they form from both trophoblast and the endometrium. Uh, the number varies from 5 to 10. They form between days 35 to 60. They produce the equine chorionic gonadotrophin and they are sloughed off after around day 60 to 100. Endometrial cups develop from cells of the chorionic girdle, which can first be detected histologically at roughly 25 days of gestation. Initially, this structure is a narrow band of thickened trophoblast that develops circumferentially around the conceptus at a point where the membranes of the allantois and yolk sac meet. Girdle cell invasion and proliferation result in the formation of tightly packed mass of trophoblast derived cells containing little stroma. These are the endometrial cups. Invasion of the endometrial glands leads to destruction of their apical epithelium. Deeper segments of those glands are spared, but the lumens are obstructed by cup cells and they become the standard with secretions. Endometrial cups are destroyed by day 100 to 140. Now, immunological destruction of the endometrial cups appears to be a response to paternal class 1 maternal histocompatibility antigens, which are highly expressed on invading girdle cells. In conjunction with the cellular response, there is a vigorous humoral immune response to these antigens. Several interesting observations on the endometrial cup biology have been made in interspecific equine pregnancies. In mares carrying donkey conceptuses, the chorionic girdle fails to invade the endometrium and endometrial cups do not develop. Most of these pregnancies are aborted 
between days 80 and 90. But the roughly 30% that survive and are carried to term do so in the absence of ECG. However, in donkeys carrying a hini fetus, the cups develop to a much larger size and considerably higher concentrations of ECG are achieved than in donkeys carrying a donkey fetus. Then this is the histological classification of the uh, placenta, maybe epitheliochorial, syndasmochorial, endotheliochorial, hemochorial and uh, hemochorial seen in the human and rabbit and then epitheliochorial is seen in pig, horse and ruminants and syndasmochorial is specific to the ruminant species, endotheliochorial is seen in dog and cat. This is how the interface of the maternal and the fetal tissues occurs uh, and which is the basis for classification of the placenta. In all cases, fetal and maternal blood does not mix. The, these are the examples. Diffuse epitheliochorial, horses and pigs, cartilaginary epitheliochorial, ruminants, discoid and hemochorial, humans, apes, monkeys and rodents, zonary and endotheliochorial, the dog, cat and ferret. This is the gestation length for different animal species, cattle 270 to 280 days, beef cows 280 to 290 days, mares 340 to 390 days, ass 365 to 375 days, hennies 340 to 350 days, mule 355 days, eve 143 to 155 days, uh, the pig 111 to 116 days, the bitch 59 to 68 days, the queen 56 to 65 days, buffaloes 310 to 320 days and female camel 370 to 380 days. Now we talk something about the placental functions. The placenta acts as a place for exchange of gases, nutrients and waste products. It uh, helps in chemical protection by immunosuppression, prevents infiltration by maternal defenses and filters the toxins. Then physical protection, shock absorber and uh, acts as a transient endocrine gland producing estrogen, progesterone, SCG, ECG and prolactin or the placental lactogens. These are the developmental features seen uh, uh, the germ layers, mares formed by 13 to 14 days, cows day 14 uh, and then uh, these are the different things that have been seen by ultrasonography in different animal species. Now uh, by ultrasonographically evaluating the crown rump plant, here you can see this is the crown and this is the rump measuring this area uh, can uh, help in estimating the fetal age. The factors that influence the fetal growth include genetics, environment and fetal hormones. They are in genetics, species, breed, litter size and genotype. The environment includes the mother nutrition, size, parity, the placental blood flow and size and the fetal hormones include the thyroid, insulin and the growth hormone. Then uh, certain lines of animals may grow faster. The fetal hormones, thyroid is responsible for skeletal and muscular development, insulin for increased energy substrate and growth hormone stimulates the fetal growth. Then the uterine size changes during pregnancy. Uh, the uterus continuously grows as the pregnancy increases. This occurs because increase in the number of cells, increase in the size of the cells and stretching. Utra uterus is one organ that has uh, immense expansion and retraction capabilities. Then the placental circulation the ductus venosus and then the ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale. So uh, fetal blood never goes to the fetal lungs, it's, uh, it goes to the, uh, um, uh, through the umbilical vein, it goes to the, through the placenta, it goes to the maternal circulation wherein carbon dioxide of the fetus is exhaled through the mother's uh, lung. Now these are the uh, changes in the 
progesterone and estradiol in the eve progesterone is high up to uh, day 50 of gestation and then it declines in the cattle the progesterone is high throughout gestation and estradiol is low throughout gestation except uh, nearing parturition the estradiol increases and the progesterone declines in the male the relative progesterone from the CL is high for a few days and then the uh, progesterone production is taken over by the uh, placenta the this is the levels of ECG they are high at day 35 to 40 they start increasing they are highest at, uh, uh, and then at around day 100 they decline and the endometrial cups they regress this is the the primary CL it is producing in the male the primary CL is producing progesterone then there is formation at around day 35 to 40 there is the ECG secretion this leads to formation of uh, the accessory and supplemental corporal lutea both uh, the primary and the accessory corporal lutea regress by day 180 to 210 and then the complete uh, progesterone production is by the equine placenta uh, this is how the relative progesterone and estrogen change in the mare during the gestation progesterone is essential to maintain the pregnancy in species uh, like sow cow but it's uh, uh, less important in the even mare uh, wherein the placental takeover occurs by day 15 in the eve and day 70 in the mare the placenta produces sufficient progesterone from day 15 in the eve and day 70 in the mare uh, uh, so that maintains pregnancy other species in which placenta does not take over progesterone production is the bitch, queen, alpaca, llama and camel, rabbit and goat. Here also in these species uh, the progesterone is required to be produced by the corpora lutea. So thank you very much. Kindly share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel Govind Narayan Purohit if you like them. Thank you.